This is Dr. Kopelman. I am going to discuss a patient who is 21 years old who was assaulted, uh, resulting in an injury to his eyelids and eye socket. We see that there's swelling of the eyelids and face, bruising of his eyelids. The patient also had double vision and numbness of his face. Fortunately, the eyeball itself was not injured, but the bones on the floor and the inner aspect of his eye socket became fractured, resulting in a downward displacement of soft tissues into the hollow spaces adjacent to the eye socket. Let's look at an illustration of the normal structures that surround the eye. Here the eye appears as a circle in the center, surrounded by muscles that move the eyes up and down, side to side. They are interconnected by the orbital fibers, and the walls of the eye socket, also called in medical terminology the orbit, are surrounded by four bony walls. Notice that the inner or medial wall is adjacent to a hollow space called the ethmoid sinus, and the inferior wall is adjacent to a hollow space called the maxillary sinus. Next, we turn to an illustration of the normal bony architecture of the eye socket. Here we see that the bones on the floor and the medial wall are very thin and are vulnerable to breaks. This is actually a fortunate anatomic feature because the bones tend to fracture before the eyeball itself ruptures. We also see that there are tiny holes in the bones where the nerves exit the skull. These nerves give sensation to our upper face and teeth. These nerves are sometimes involved in orbital injuries as well. When a person is hit in the eye by a fist, exploding airbag, or a baseball, the pressure increases rapidly. The eye and surrounding tissues become deformed and the floor of the orbit blows out. The bones and the contents of the orbit are forced downward causing an entrapment of muscle, fat, and orbital fibers. We see from this frontal illustration that fat and fibers are pushed into the sinuses that surround the eye socket. The tissue that is trapped in the medial wall and inferior wall causes the muscles to become tethered, leading to double vision. In addition, the patient will appear to have a small, sunken eye. When a patient gets injured, they usually end up in the emergency room where the emergency physician orders a CAT scan. Here we see the fracture of the floor and the medial wall that correspond to the previous illustration. In addition, the blood that is settled to the floor of the sinus can be seen. The first objective of treatment in these injuries are to prevent infection and reduce swelling. Patients are placed on oral antibiotics and steroids. They are instructed not to blow their nose because air can enter the orbit leading to infections. Surgery is typically scheduled in a few days. An incision is made on the inner aspect of their lower eyelids. The tissues that have been prolapsed into the surrounding sinuses are pulled back to their normal position and a custom sized plastic implant is slipped over the broken bones to prevent tissue from slipping back into the sinuses. In most cases, the surgery is highly successful and patients regain full movement of their muscles. They, are no longer, they will no longer have double vision and sensation slowly recovers over several months.